A great day to one and all. Welcome to this review for combinatorics, particularly for categories five and six. So for the first part of the review, so the items are will be similar, but for the remaining parts, they may be different. I am Sir Kim, and I will be your reviewer for today. So I hope that you are all set. I hope you are doing well. And let's uh, flash the question. So I will flash the questions or the problems and feel free uh, to solve them, okay? You may pause the video, solve the problem, and check if you have the same answer as I am. So let us start with relatively easier items for now, okay? So without further ado, let's have the problems. The top five in the Miss Universe finale are from Brazil, Peru, India, Mexico, and Dominican Republic. In how many ways can they finish, considering that there are no ties for any position? So the fact that there are no ties means there's only one Miss Universe. Um, no tie. For example, it's impossible to have two at least two people for a certain position. For example, having two uh, first runner-ups is not allowed. Okay, so they are all different. So to solve this uh, type of problem, we will employ what we call the fundamental counting principle. So for this problem, there are five slots, namely the Miss Universe, the first runner-up, second runner-up, third runner-up, and fourth runner-up, okay? So for example, out of these five positions, uh, any one of them could be Miss Universe. So let's say five of them could be possible winners for Miss Universe. Suppose that winner is Brazil, which means we have four, uh, we have four other people or four other candidates who would vie or compete for the first runner-up positions, namely Peru, India, Mexico, and Dominican Republic. Assuming that Peru is the first runner-up. We have India, Mexico, and Dominican Republic. So three probable options for the second runner-up. And let's say India is a second runner-up. So we have Mexico and Dominican Republic. So two options for the third runner-up. And assuming it's Mexico who won third runner-up, then it leaves Dominican Republic or one option left as the fourth runner-up. The form and also... The fundamental counting principle tells us that we have to multiply these numbers. And since you are multiplying the whole numbers from five all the way until one, I believe you are familiar with this symbol. So five with the uh, exclamation point. And this exclamation point is read as factorial. And if you take the factorial of a certain num whole number n, then that means you are going to multiply all whole numbers from n all the way down until 1. So that's why this is actually 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 or 5 factorial, which is 120. So in other words, there are 120 ways for them to end the pageant without any ties for any position. I hope we started right. And let's continue right. Problem number two. In how many ways can you answer 10 true or false items if the first three of them were already answered? Note that you will answer each item by only one of true or false, not both. And it is also assum uh, an assumption here that all items will be answered that no item will be left blank, okay? Take note, though, that it says here that the first three of them were already answered, which means that for this particular case, seven questions, particularly items four until 10, need to be answered. And since each question can be answered in two ways, 
then the test can be answered in this number of ways. This is the seven slots. Uh, question number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We did not put a slot anymore or intend a slot anymore for one, two, three, because they are already answered. So no need to include in the uh, computation. And since, again, by the fundamental counting principle, we have to multiply all of them. So since there are seven twos as factors, then this is just equal to two raised to seven, which is 128. Hence, if you have 10 true or false questions, and given that the first three of them were answered already, then that leaves the seven other items to be answerable in 128 ways. I hope it's clear with us. All right, moving on to problem three. There are 10 evenly spaced points that were placed in a circle. So meaning those 10 points, uh, distinct points were uh, put around a circle or along lie along the circumference of the circle. How many quadrilaterals, when we say quadrilaterals, four-sided polygons, are possible if any of the four points will be connected? Give this problem a try. And if you are ready, let's solve. And let's compare if you get, let's see if you get the right answer. From here, this is actually a combination problem. And the formula for combination, NCR, this is just this is just one of the notations, equals n factorial all over n minus r quantity uh, factorial times r factorial in the denominator, where n refers to the num. Uh, take note as well if you have combinations problem, the n is you sh is greater than or equal to your r, and in combination by the way, order does not matter. For example, A, B, C, D is the same as B, A, D, C. Okay? So order here doesn't matter as long as they are present in the set. And in this case, the order does not matter, okay? Because as long as if you are naming a quadrilateral, for example, if I have quadrilateral A, B, a, B C, D, you could also call it quadrilateral B, C, D, A as long as the manner of stating the vertices is um, consecutive, either clockwise or counterclockwise, for example. So here our n is 10 and our r is 4 because you are going to get 4 at a time out of 10 without any regard to order. So by substitution, that's 10c4 equals 10 factorial all over 10 minus 4 factorial, 4 factorial. The denominators, uh, the 10 minus 4, Become six, so six factorial here. The 10 factorial becomes 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial. I stop with six factorial because I know that I could cancel it in the denominator. The other four, the four factorial in the denominator is expressed as four times three times two times one. So I divided the six factorial, so you have this. So for example, in the denominator, 4 and times 2 is 8. So it cancels here. 8 divided, this becomes 1. So 9 divided by 3 becomes 3. And if ever you do the division and simplification, you are left with 10 times 3 times 7, which is 210. And if you got this right, congratulations. But if not, again, learning experience. I hope you're doing well. And again, if you don't understand, or let's say if you need time to digest the, the processes or the question, feel free to stop the video from time to time and check and, and try to understand. Thank you. Number four. In how many ways can a doctor visit his seven patients once in his rounds? Okay. So meaning the seven patients, all of them will be visited exactly once for that particular uh, day, for example. So in how many ways can this be done? So for this, um, to do this, 
in the first visit, he could visit any of the seven. Once he visited one of them, there will be six other patients left. Out of the six, if you visited one, there will be five others. And following the trend until four, three, two, and one. So you see, this is again the product of all whole numbers from seven all the way down until one. So this is actually seven factorial or 5,040. So if you got this right, great. Moving on, problem number five. Interestingly, n factorial equals three factorial times five factorial times seven factorial. What is n? All right. What do you think? Let's see. Let's solve them. So for this one, given this, I express using the definition of factorial, um, 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1 here. 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And I just copy the 7 factorial. Note that the largest factorial here is 7, is 7 factorial. So we are expecting that since you are multiplying other numbers here, so the answer has to be greater than 7 factorial. So n has to be greater than 7. Now, so you might ask, sir, how come some of them are colored? For your reference, the green ones, uh, the red ones, the 2 times 5 becomes 10. The green ones, the 3 times 3 is 9. The others, the blue ones, the 1 times 4 times 2 times 1 is actually 8, right? And I just copy the 7 factorial. And you could see from here that you multiplied all the... Remember that 7 factorial means 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Therefore, this expression here, uh, n factorial is equal to the product of all the whole numbers from 10 all the way down until 7, uh, all the way until 1, I mean, which means that, that 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial is actually 10 factorial. So since n factorial is equal to 10 factorial, it therefore follows that n is 10. So if you got 10, great job and keep it up. But if not, again, still, we have a long way to learn and we can still learn from time to time, okay? Number six. If 20 factorial plus 19 factorial all over 21 is equal to n factorial, find the value of n. What's your guess or what do you think is the correct answer here? Let's see if you got it right. So take note that the technique here, I just copied it first. The technique here lies to the fact that you will be able to identify the greatest common factor of your numerator. Take a look. Your numerator is 20 factorial plus 19 factorial. And always remember this. If I give you two factorials of whole numbers, always remember that the greatest common factor of these two is always the smaller factorial. Between 20 factorial and 19 factorial, the smaller factorial is 19 factorial, right? which means that the greatest common factor of your numerator is 19 factorial. And what will happen? We will factor it out, the greatest common factor, which is 19 factorial. 20 factorial divided by 19 factorial, so it's what will be left will be 20. Why? Because the 19 factor, because 20 factorial could be expressed as 20 times 19 factorial, and the 19 factorial will just be divided into 1. Plus, 19 factorial divided by 19 factorial is 1, 
because again, any non-zero number divided by itself is just one, all over 21 equals n factorial. The 20 plus one here, if you could notice in what's inside the parentheses is the 20 plus one simplifies to 21, which is again your denominator. So 21 divided by 21 becomes one. And what's left is that at the left-hand side, it's just 19 factorial. So 19 factorial uh, divide, uh, is equal to n factorial. And using, again, a similar analogy on the other problem, it follows that n is equal to 19. Okay? I hope you did well. Number seven. I have six different English and five different math books. I have space for five books only though, where the books can be placed vertically. In how many ways can I arrange the five books such that two English books are on the left while the three math books are on the right? So it's like you have a block. The left, the ones, uh, the two uh, books on the left should be English, two different English books, and the three on the right should be uh, the math books. But take note, be careful. Out of the six different English, you will choose two. Out of the different five math, you will choose three. And here, order matters because the fact that you are going to arrange them on a shelf. This time, it entails now permutation. And 6P2, that's six permutation two because out of the six different English, you will choose two. And 5P3, because out of the five different math, you will choose three of them. And you have to multiply them because, again, of the fundamental counting principle. And remember the formula for permutation. NPR is equal to N factorial all over N minus R factorial. So 6P2 is 6 factorial all over 6 minus 2 uh, factorial times the 5P3, it's 5 factorial all over 5 minus 3 uh, factorial. So the 6 factorial, it becomes 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. I stop with 4 factorial because in anticipation that the denominator is also 4 factorial and 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial here will be just 1. That's why what's left here is just six times five. However, here for this one, it becomes five times four times three times two factorial all over two factorial. And the two factorials again divide. So what's left, it's just five times four times three. And multiplying them all gives you 1,800. Hence, there are 1,800 ways for you to arrange those books given this condition. All right, number eight. How many eight digit numbers are possible from the arrangement of the digits of 11,333,577? So take note, all of these digits will be used, just rearrange them to form the other eight digit numbers. And if you're going to form all the other eight digit numbers, how many do you think will be there in all? So that's the problem. Now, take note that this one now involves permutation with repeated elements. Why? Because if you could see here, there, our n is eight. Why n is eight? Because you are going to arrange n, uh, I mean eight elements. But the two ones, there are two ones, three threes, one five, and two sevens. And since they are, these are identical elements, rearranging the identical elements themselves do not produce a new permutation or a new arrangement. Hence, for this case, we have to divide the factorials of the number of ways of, the, of these. That's why it's 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial because the arrangement of the two and interchanging the two ones don't matter. 
divided by 3 factorial, divided by 1 factorial, uh, 2 factorial. That's why your denominator is 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial. And doing uh, your mathematics here, doing your own simplification with factorials, I believe you will end up with 1,680. Did you get it right? I hope so. Number nine is quite similar in terms of uh, solutions. I have 10 identical balloons, except in terms of color, of which three are red, four are green, and the rest are yellow. And I am planning to arrange them in a line. How many possibilities are there in all? What do you think? So again, it's permutation with identical elements. Feel free to pause the video and solve on your own if you wish. But now, without further ado, let's divulge the solution. So again, there are 10 of them. So N is 10 because there are 10 balloons that you're going to arrange in all. Three are red, four green, and three yellow. And again, rearranging or interchanging the same, the same objects do not produce new meaning uh, or new, um, they do not produce a new arrangement. So we will divide 10 factorial with the factorials of 3, 4, and 3. That's why I arrived to 10 factorial all over the product of 3 factorial, 4 factorial, and 3 factorial. And the correct answer here is 4,200 only. I hope you got it. Let's have number 10. Anna, Nina, Xiaoyu, Paul, and Jack too would like to play trip to Jerusalem by standing around a group of chairs. In how many ways can they stand? Okay, what do you think? So if you could see here, there are five people. And they are going to stand now around the circle. And a group of around a group of chairs. So this time it involves what we call circular permutation. And n is five because there are n uh there are five people, five different people. And the formula for the total number of permutations of five different objects. Again, for circular, it's just n minus one quantity factorial. And since there, your n is 5, because there are 5 people, so 5 minus 1 quantity factorial, which is 4 factorial, and 4 factorial means just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or 24. So there are 24 ways for those 5 people to stand around a group of chairs. Okay, 